rich that they're not going to take from us. And he'll provide unlimited welfare. He wants to. For anybody anywhere in the world that comes into our country. I said, that's a great idea. Where are we going to get the money, Sleepy Joe? Under my leadership, we achieved the most secure border in U.S. history, and we're finishing the wall. So we're up to now 407, I think, 406, 407. We're doing 10 miles a week. Nobody believes it. We invested $2.5 trillion in the U.S. military. Defense spending in North Carolina has soared to more than $1 billion a year, many times what it was. And by the way, all made in the USA, we have uh, the greatest machinery ever made by any nation in history. Russia, China, every one of them, they're all jealous. What we have is uh, not even to be talked about. I actually mentioned this at a rally about two months ago. And they said, he's giving away information. No, I'm not. I'm telling you something. We got stuff that they dream about. All made in the USA, $2.5 trillion. And you know what? Hope to God we've redone our nuclear. We're number one in the world by far. It was going down the tubes. It was old and tired. But hope to God we never have to use it. Remember when I came in, they said, with his personality, we'll, have, we'll be in a war in the first week. Where's the, where's the war? Right? Where's the war? Remember? You would have been in a war without me because North Korea, we were going to have a nice nuclear war with North Korea. And now I get along great with him, and everyone says, oh, that's terrible that I get along. No, it's a good thing. You know, getting along is a good thing, not a bad thing. And you get along through strength, not through weakness. You never get along through weakness. And we launched the first new branch of the United States Armed Forces. And I never even talked. When I came to North Carolina and talked to you, I never said this. So we actually did more than I promised. I'm the only politician, if you call me that, I'm the only politician that actually did more than I promised, because I never talked about the Space Force. I never talked about it, right? And as I, you know, sat for a year and I watched and I saw what was going on with Russia and with China and with others, I said, wait a minute, we're going to fall way behind. We can't do that. And we launched the Space Force, and Jim Imhoff and some of the people in the Senate were fantastic, and the House. And we got it passed, so we have, first time in 75 years, think of that, a new force. And it's a big force, and it's an important one. We passed VA Choice for our veterans and VA Accountability for our veterans. Nobody thought that could happen. 42 years. And we took over 100 percent of the ISIS caliphate. When I came in, it was a mess. They were all over the place. We took over 100 percent, and we killed the leader of ISIS and founder of ISIS, al-Baghdadi. They were after him for 15 years. And we took out the world's number one terrorist, the mass murderer of many American troops and many other troops and many other people. Qasim Soleimani is dead. And I withdrew from last administration's disastrous $150 billion plus $1.8 billion in cash. Can you believe it? Five plane loads of cash. Figure that one. The Iran nuclear deal, a disaster. And uh, you know the first call I'm going to get after we win? It's going to be from Iran. Can we make a deal? Because their country's going to hell with the sanctions and all of the things we've done. And they want to make a deal. I said, why don't you wait till after the election? I said, but if you wait till after the election, it is going to be much tougher. But I said, wait till after the election, because you, you can't make a deal. Now, you got to see if Sleepy Joe, because if Sleepy Joe gets in, you make the greatest deal ever made. And China will own us. Remember what I said. I kept my promise, recognized the true capital of Israel, and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem. Got it, Bill. And we got it built, Mr. Congressman, right? We got it built, too. They wanted $2 billion to build it. I said, maybe we could do cheaper. I said to my people, I said, you know the story. Find something. Maybe we own some land. We did. It had a building on it. So we were going to spend $2 billion. I said, well, let's renovate the existing building. Is it big enough? Oh, it's too big, actually. And how's the location? Much better than the one we were going to buy in Jerusalem. I said, all right, come back with a price. 
David Friedman, who's one of the most successful lawyers. Now he's the ambassador to Israel. So he calls me up two days later. He says, sir, I think we can do it for $350,000. I said, David. So from $2 billion, I said, well, what's the difference between the $2 billion version and the one or $350,000? He said, sir, honestly, the three hundred and fifty will have a better location, a better building. It's actually better. Now, who would believe stories like this, right? And I actually told him I did something I don't think congressman I've ever done in my life. I said, David, it's too cheap. It doesn't sound good. Make it more expensive, please. So we made it 500000 Not bad, right? And we opened it up a few months later. So not only did we name Jerusalem, became the capital of Israel, we got the building built. This thing would have taken 10 years, 20 years. Would have cost $5 billion. It would have been ridiculous. I also recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. I've been fighting over that for 52 years. And instead of endless wars, we're forging peace in the Middle East. I did more in 47 months than sleepy Joe Biden did in 47 years. It's true. And now he's pushing the most far-left agenda ever put forward by a presidential nominee. The Biden plan would destroy your Social Security, and he would destroy all pre-existing conditions, and you know it, and so does he. Biden's running mate sponsored a bill to outlaw private health insurance. We have 180 million people that love their private health care. Biden vowed to terminate our travel bans on jihadist regions and surge refugee admissions. He's agreed to this with crazy Bernie by 700 percent. Think of that. Does that sound reasonable? Opening the floodgates to radical Islamic terrorism. I said, no, thank you. He wants to ban school choice and charter schools. And in a second term, and I've already started, we will provide school choice to every parent in America, one of the most important. <laughs> a vote for Republicans is a vote for safe communities, great jobs, and limitless future. A limitless future for all Americans. And just in concluding, first of all, it's great to be with you on this gorgeous day. This is beautiful. It's been a great state. I mean, my granddaughter, you know what happened, right? You know the name of my granddaughter? Carolina! Yeah. Carolina. Am I allowed to say that to South Carolina? Because I love them, too. Can I maybe do it? Am I okay with that? Can I have you from it? Now it's Carolina. Beautiful. Over the next four years, we'll make America into the manufacturing superpower of the world, and we'll end our reliance on China. We've already started. We're well on our way. We will hire more police, increase penalties for assault on law enforcement, and we will ban deadly sanctuary cities. We will uphold religious liberty, free speech, and the right to keep and bear arms. We will strike down terrorists who threaten our citizens, and we will keep America out of endless, ridiculous, foolish, stupid foreign wars. We will maintain America's unrivaled military might, and we will ensure peace through strength. That's what we have. 